So we've uh, we had a little bit of a change of driver on the way back and uh, yeah, Clive showed us a little bit more of what the uh, Tesla can do with all the suspension mods that we've done. Obviously talked us through it. Can you kind of show us what's uh, going on here in terms of the parts that are fitted? Yeah, so as I was saying before, the, uh, I've changed the uh, suspension arms, four suspension arms each side from the standard steel items with bushes, rubber bushes, yeah. to these billet arms um, made by Mountain Pass Performance. Right. Yeah, so this is a, um, this is a camber arm, so we've got a really easy adjustment and finite Fi uh, fine adjustment on this nut. So these two lock nuts here. Yep. And then you can just turn that with a spanner and lengthen or shorten that, which changes the camber. Right. Again, mountain, mountain pass performance, they've done, they've done a really, really good job. I mean, just little things like that, where you have really finite, fine, easy adjustment. Yeah. Instead of a, the standard eccentric adjuster there, which is very, it's quite difficult to get a really accurate adjustment on it. Can you buy that um, so, part by itself, or do you have to buy the whole kit? So you as buy a, whole? a pair, yeah, as a pair, right. pair of arms, left and right. Yeah. Um, this one's a toe arm, so again, adjustable in toe. Yeah. Left and right, yeah. And then you've got uh, trailing and traction arms, which take other forces from the wheel into the into, into the chassis. Right. So okay. multi-link suspension, basically. So again, just fir firm. Yeah. Up so a these bit. these don't need uh, any adjustment. Right. Um, and they're yeah, they're just spherical bearing. Sealed spherical bearings on the on the inner joint, so it's removing it's removing the rubber bushes on all the in, inner joints for the yeah. multi-link suspension to keep the geometry in spec as such when you when you're loading up suspension. Well, when you were loading it up area, uh, <laughs> earlier, it was yeah it was magnificent on the road, and you know we were on those country roads where again as usual the surfaces are very poor, and that's where we really benefited from the um, higher profile uh, a tyres with the uh, on the 18s. Um, I see the uh, suspension there. Yeah, KW Variant 3. Um, this is a rear spring with an adjustable platform. So these are adjustable ride height Yeah. with that adjustment there. And if you, if you can get in there, you can see the rebound adjustments on the top. Yeah, yeah I can and, see it. And bump at the bottom right. with a th just an easy click adjuster. Okay. So, I mean, it, we were in comfort mode as such in the, in the settings then with the 18s, that's my normal daily driver yeah. settings. But if you go on track and you want a bit more spirited driving, it's very easy. I mean, I don't have, you don't have to take the wheels off to adjust them. You can get, you can get underneath and so get you just, over the top. So you can just flick to the desired number yeah. that you want, yeah. I mean, I've, all the size and job done. Yeah, KW give you, give you their recommended settings for track work. Yeah. Um, rebound and, and compression front and rear, different. But you, I, I, I normally, I mean, I drive the thing for, for a few weeks, make an adjustment drive it again for a few weeks, make yeah. another adjustment. And I do that until I've dialed it in front and rear, how I like it, to get the balance right and the comfort and the compromise. Yeah. Yeah, and then oh, I can cool. do that on for, for road and track. And you've uh, got the slightly longer um, studs. Yeah, wheel studs. The... It just allows me to space the, uh, these are high tensile long wheel studs. The, the Tesla ones are quite short. Right. Um, it just allows me to in increase the track up to the arch. Was really? that 30 mil, is it? On That's 15, it's not much. 15, yeah, okay. so it's a hub, it's hub centric as well. Yeah. So it's transferring the load. Well, it's centering the wheel. I mean, the, these are lug centric, these wheels anyway. So the, the lugs center the wheel and take all, take all the load. It's the friction right. between the back of the wheel and the, and the um, hub, which is, keeps the wheel in place. It's not the studs. Right. They just clamp it. Yeah. But the hub centric, this centers it when you're putting the wheel on. Yeah. No, to make sure really. that it's you know yeah, it's accurate, it's like, oh. so you don't get any vibration. No, awesome. Yeah, because I mean these the at the back you can put three hundred fives on these. Yeah, you were saying three hundred five yeah, width. Yeah. I mean and two hundred seven. You can put two seven fives square on, on. There's a lot of room under the arch. Yeah. Which is great if you want to you know have eighteens and put wide tyres on semi slicks for track for you know get more grip on track basically. Yeah. I wouldn't do that on the road because efficiency would take a massive dive. Yeah. Dive on, do, a nose dive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at the front and uh, yeah, have a look at the modifications you've done there then. So Clive, take us through the uh, modifications on the front end here. 
Yeah, so we've got Mountain Pass Performance upper wishbone, billet alloy again with the inner joint being spherical bearing, sealed spherical bearing instead of rubber bush. Right. And then we've got the ball joint here into the upper arm and a quick adjustment for, of camber with this connection here. So we've got two bolts and shims in here that are adjust the length of the upper arm. Right. So you can loosen these bolts off and take shims in or out and, and quickly and easily change the camber okay. from standard negative one to negative three. And what's it currently running at the moment? Uh, it's negative two at the moment. It's a, it's a compromise again for the road between grip and braking performance and um, range. Right. And steering feel as well comes into it. But it's, yeah, I mean, I've just done a trip a 600 mile trip and the car was doing about 250 watt hours per mile so that's really really good yeah yeah an actual range of about 300 miles and that was with the 18s that's with it? the 18s yeah okay. with yeah tesla specific tires mission and pilot sport fours uh yeah so the that's the upper arm and then the lower wishbone yeah this one here yeah i can just about see that yeah if you look into the look on the inner joint it's you can just see some blue there and a yeah. black boot. That's again, that's been replaced. That, that was a big rubber bush standard. Right. And that takes a lot of, that takes a lot of, the, of the force from the cornering force. Yeah. So you've got quite a lot of deflection standard in that bush and that's changed to a, sphere, again, a spherical bearing. So it's a sealed for spherical bearing. So there's no, there's no actual deflection in that at all. Um, but mountain high performance, they've, done, they've just done a great job on all these arms. Yeah. Because they haven't, they haven't ruined the drivability of the car. You, you, I didn't notice any extra, uh, Noise, vibration, or harshness in the car after I changed all these arms. Well, yeah, because it's your everyday car. Yeah, isn't it's it? my everyday driver. Yeah, but then again, I don't, don't want to. I don't want to ruin it and turn no. it into a race car because it's not. It's, it's a no. road car. I just but you want to have the option of being able to take on the track, of course. Yeah, so. and, I, and I want it when I drive it a bit harder. I want accuracy in the steering, and I want you know I want it to be. Um, oh, I can't think of the word. Uh, well, it's the right balance between. Yeah, you know, I want it to be pre that's... predictable. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I want it to be predictable. You know, the front end. I don't. I don't want movement in the in all these arms so that you know it's a bit it's a bit uh, woofly on the front end i want it to be much more accurate and it is it's yeah made it made a huge difference and Mount, mountain pass performance they do a soft setup and a sporty setup but you mentioned that you got this well yeah they they um they've developed um the suspension kit yeah by the shocks and the, and the springs with kw and and they've specified their own spring rates right. and damping rates and they do two kits they do a comfort kit and a sport kit right I I didn't know about mountain pass performance when I bought these this KW. I mean, I hadn't had the car very long and found the KW variant. KW did the variant three, so I ordered that early on straight straight from um, KW. Right. And I think that's sort of in between the mountain pass performance sports kit and the and the comfort kit. Right. So it's a nice compromise for me. It's uh, yeah. I've I've used KW suspension for years. So yeah. Yeah. I, well. I've got. You've been racing your Mitsubishi Evo for many years, haven't you? Well, so. yeah, Sound Axle stands for quite a few years, but yeah, back in the day, I uh, yeah, did a lot of track work. And I run, yeah, I run KW Competition Dampers. I used to deal directly with uh, the factory, so, yeah. you know, they're, they're very, very good, KW, I like them a lot. And they're, and they're inox stainless steel, so you've got no problem with corrosion. No, no, nice and yeah, so very pretty under there. If you want to adjust the, the ride height, you know, after a few years, it's not going to be all corroded and no. you can still turn it, no problem. Awesome. And I do notice there's a, it's a little symbol here, which looks yeah. familiar. Yeah, yeah, unplugged performance. Yeah. So uh, what's your uh, thoughts around uh, the bits that they do? Because they, they do quite a wide range of performance parts. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah, they do lots of upgrades, suspension upgrades. Again, I, I found Mountain Pass Performance and I've always used them and mm. they're, they're just great. They really are. They're, their customer service is brilliant as well. Yeah. So I've just, you know, I've stayed with them. I've been really happy with their, the, with the parts I've bought from them. Mm. So, but they, they, concentrate more on suspension and brakes yeah whereas unplugged performance i mean they do all that but they also do aero yeah uh up, upgrades so yeah this, so this is um one of their front lips and in accordance with them it increases downforce but also increases aero, aero efficiency around the front end oh right okay so you'll in theory you'll gain gain range oh wow. as well yeah i mean it's only a small percentage yeah I think but you need to do a few thousand miles before you get your money back, but um. yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a combination of both. I mean, even lowering the vehicle increases the range anyway. I mean, you, yeah. you, you lower the vehicle an inch and a half, that'll increase the air efficiency of the car anyway. 
due to underbody aerodynamics changing. So shall we uh, get your 20s on and see what the difference is then? Yeah, from driving, yeah, and I'll tweak the uh, compression damping on the KWs to make it a bit more sporty. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, let's get cracking. Bump and rebound sands on the on the suspension. KWB3. Now, now we've changed the wheels. There's an obvious difference. You can feel the weight of the uh, wheels, not only on the steering, but you can you can feel it. You know, through uh, through the seat, of course. Um, it's noticeably different to my friend's one, though, in terms of the level of grip. Yeah, I mean, we've I've increased the bump damping quite a lot from right out of the soft end to more you know nearer the, the full stiff end yeah it's about five from full stiff on the bump now all round and before it was on 14 from full stiff on the bump rebounds the same I've dialed the rebound in at the rebounds don't need to increase the rebound so yeah your directness oh, uh, yes. responsiveness with the 35 profile Michelin Pilot 4S's and the damping used to feel quite a big difference yeah I'd, I'd stiffen up more on track, on a smooth track. No, sure. Yeah, sure. still, you've still got compliance with the road. But, um, that's one of the reasons I love KW V3, because you've got adjustment of the bump and rebound. So, you can control body, body roll and responsiveness, and also grip with the rebound. that um, Mountain Pass Performance, and probably Unplugged as well, um, no doubt, uh, they do a, a rear motor cooler as well, an oil, an oil cooler. Yeah, exactly. They're developing Mountain Pass Performance to sell a rear cooler, the rear yeah. motor. Um, and they're developing front as well, the performance. Yeah. They've started, for the, they've started on the rear motor with for the long range, uh, rear wheel drive, and yeah. Standard range rear wheel drive. Whether I'll need that on my TVR EV conversion with a Tesla rear motor, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, <laughs> I suppose well, it depends I mean, on how mental I go with it in terms of whether it's track or you know just showboating on on yeah, a private but, road. Exactly, but also the the oil the, the oil from the motors is used for cooling and heating yeah. the batteries. And, oh, okay. the cool, and the coolant system um, transfers heat. To and from the well, from the air conditioning system. Yeah. So the air conditioning compressor cools the water as well. So any other extra radiators in that system that can help uh, remove heat energy, in, you know, improves the um, time or increases the time that you can drive the, the car fast on track, hard on track, before you get to a point where it starts reducing power because everything's getting too hot. Right. And they do, uh, they do some sort of uh, party box? I mean, I mean, Yeah, they do a party box for, for the standard range right. and the long range. I think they're developing one for the performance, but the performance has got track mode on it, so you can, you can turn the stability control down. It's, it's still there in the background, I think. Yeah. But you can turn it right down, and you can adjust the torque split. But the, long, the rear wheel drive, the, the all-wheel drive long range and the rear wheel drive the standard range they don't have the performance uh, the track mode. So no. if you want to go on track with one of them, the, the, the stability control is really, really intrusive. Yeah. So the, the SO Sasha's that developed this party box that you plug into the system and it's adjustable. But they can adjust it with software for the future as well. They've got software updates on it as well. Right. So if Tesla does a software update, which means their party box doesn't work anymore, they can do another software update to get it working again. Okay. That, that, re that, that basically removes all the stability control. This 
road, I'm not going to be taking it too fast. And of course, for, for legal reasons. <laughs> but no, it definitely feels better. Going the uh, electric route. Yeah. Let's hope it's a rental one, so it's uh, you know legal. legal. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Love the indicators. Oh yeah, that felt so much better around that corner. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So much yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. The grip. Yeah. The sharpness. Oh yeah. it around a roundabout before, absolutely flat out and out the other side and there's been a copper in a lay by a cup and he hasn't even looked up. Because <laughs> he can't, he can't, yeah. you know, you know, he can't no, hear anything. No. If you were in an M3 or something doing that, it'd be fucking, All over it'd you. be like Jesus Christ yeah. and, and straight out. But he didn't even, literally, I looked and went, oh fuck, and he didn't even look up, he was looking at the breed, obviously reading something in his lap, he didn't even look up. Absolutely. Well, I don't think the TVR is going to be quite that way in flight because you'd probably make a bit more of a tire squeal, I'm and guessing. What is there? Is there because of the grip? Yeah, annihilating themselves into smoke. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the hope, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, thanks, Clive, for showing us the differences not only between the 20s, which we've just uh, experienced, and the 18s, so the forged wheels you had before. I mean, those suspension mods, you know, not only could I tell when I was driving it, yeah. you know, with the 20s, uh, with those mods, you could tell that it was more direct in the steering. Yeah, and there was, there was so much yeah. more tire on the road. So the level of grip. Yeah. I mean, obviously yeah. on the uh, on the public roads, you won't notice it so much uh, as you would uh, on the racetrack. But yeah, on the track, definitely more, more load going through there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, plus you've got the aggressive stance on it as well. Um, but yeah, no, thank you very, very Function much. Function over form, Tim. Abs over absolutely, form. Yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, it really shows what you can do uh, with these cars. And, you know, yeah. who's to say it's, it wouldn't handle better than a Porsche Taken around a track potentially well, with a few mods. But I mean, yeah, the, cha the chassis, it's a really good chassis design. Start with dull wishbone suspension, front, multi-link on the rear. So that's a really good starting point. Yeah, certainly for something, having a few mods that you can do to make it a trackable car and then still have it as a daily. I think you've certainly uh, yeah, ticked all those boxes there. Yeah. So yeah, I well think, done. I think for hard track work, the only thing it needs really is cool, extra cooling. Yeah. So you can get more laps before you get power reduction. But no, that's, definitely. yeah, I mean, companies like Manpower Performance and Unplug Performance are both addressing those issues. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I'm sure Tesla will in future models. Yeah, no, it's, it's ex exciting it times, and I keep exciting. saying that, uh, to coin a phrase. And yeah, um, yeah I, I really look forward to uh, seeing what comes out and what you do to your vehicle. And I hope that once the uh, TVR EV conversion build is uh, finished, you can come and have a drive. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. But no, look thank you once that. again. No problem. Good to see you. Yeah. Cheers, Tim. Nice one. Right, Cheers. guys. So uh, yeah, that's it for now for Charge Heads UK. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, let's see what happens on the next episode.